Hi, I'm Gemma Crow, and in this short demo, I'm going to show you how to create this lovely necklace using our turquoise highlight rounds in various sizes. So to start with, we need six strands um, to, of beading thread to create this plait, which forms the basis of the design. And then we gradually thread on different beads at different stages to give us that lovely graduated effect. So the first thing we want to do is cut six lengths of beading thread and get them all together, sort of all lined up. And we want even lengths and you'll want a, around a metre of beading thread to complete the necklace. Now you can do a shorter version of this um, if you like, but I would say cut more thread than you need so that you've got plenty of room to play and um, add or remove as necessary. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my six threads through one of my crimp beads. So the crimp bead is a tiny tube of metal and we're going to take them all through. Now you might not get them all through at once, but just take your time and just make sure that you do get all six threads through. We don't want any left behind. Okay, so put one, one left out here, pop that through. And you should still have a little bit of room in there so that we can double the, the thread back through. Okay, so once they're all onto the end there, you're then going to take one end of your clasp, whichever you've decided on, and thread all of those back through the loop on the clasp. Okay, and then we're going to take some of these threads back, back through. Now we're not going to get all six through, but we don't need to. We just need one or two to go back through that clasp, that crimp tube. So I'm going to just take two and see if I can get those through. And again, this may take a little bit of time, but just persevere. And the more you can get back through, the better. But if it's only one or two, don't worry. Okay, so there's two back through. Let's try one more. Through the crimp tube and wiggle that through and then we can pull everything up and make sure all those all those strands are even through the clasp with a little bit of room so that the clasp can still move. So once you've got as many through as you like you can then use your crimp pliers to then pinch the crimp shut and because there's so many in there, we can attempt to fold it slightly just to tighten that grip onto the wires, but we won't get it fully, fully closed because there's so many through. So once you've done that, you can then take your flush cutting pliers and cut off any excess threads. Okay, so there are all our six cords secured through. We then want to take off the excess on this side too, so that we've just got six long threads to work with. I'm just going to get my pliers in as close as I can and trim off that excess. Once we've got this, we're gonna take this down to a board. Now I'm gonna use a macrame board here just to hold the threads in place. So I'm just gonna push the um, end of the clasp into one of the slots on the macrame board. You can use a pin onto a, onto a table mat it's really up to you just to hold them down for you to keep it nice and secure and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to plait so i'm going to separate these six into three and i'm going to start to plait so if you've never plaited before you basically separate into three separate sections and then take the outside to the middle from one side and then you swap and take the outside on the other side to the middle and you keep going the same. So outside to the middle, outside to the middle. Now we just want a little bit to start us off before we start putting beads on. And then once we've done about a centimetre and a half, two centimetres or so, we're then ready to start adding beads. Um, the further you get through the necklace, the easier this bit becomes. So persevere. Um, and if you want to, and you've got this macrame board, you can hold your threads down by putting the threads into different slots to help keep everything in place. Now you get lots of different sizes of gemstone within this bundle. And so what I'm gonna do is start with the smallest 
and then gradually move up the sizes towards the center of the necklace and then gradually then decrease the size as I come up to the other side of the necklace. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take two threads and if we look at the plait, we've taken the outside right hand thread into the centre. So the next one that we would move would be the outside right hand thread and we'd be taking that to the centre. So before we do that, we're going to thread on one of our tiniest beads, so one of our four millimetre faceted highlights. And you're going to just take that so it sits up into the plait just there. Once we've done that, instead of coming straight over to the center, like so, we're gonna split the threads. One thread's gonna come over the top of this central strand, and one is gonna come underneath it. And then we're pulling them back together. Okay, so it's the same motion, it's just that we're dividing the threads, and that helps that bead to stay locked into position at the top. And then we'll take the outside thread of the other side, and we'll do the same. So don't worry if they come loose, it does tighten up really easily once you take a hold of it again. So we're going to drop that bead down into position, pick up where we left off, and again come into the centre, but this time splaying those two threads out, taking one over the top into the centre and one underneath and into the centre. Okay, so you'll repeat that for this length necklace, which is a 24 inch length, You'll repeat that um, nine times with the small and then nine times with the next size down. And just make sure that you are counting how many you do in each increment so that you get an even, even design. So we just keep going doing this. I'm gonna go up the sizes. Now for this demonstration, I'm not gonna do the whole neckline, just gonna show you how that works. So now I'm gonna move up a size and you should be able to see quite quickly how your design comes together. So here's the next size up. I'm gonna put that, split, spread those threads to the center. Now when you're working with these, with the longer threads, then they can, you know, it can be that they want to move around. So you utilize the board or use some weights perhaps to help them stay down whilst you work. And you can use other threaded materials. So if you want to use um, beading threads or cords, then you can do this in exactly the same way. But to lock those beads into place, you will need to separate them. Otherwise, the beads will move, otherwise the beads won't lock into position and they will all, gravity will pull them all towards the centre. So this, this dividing the two threads and popping them over really helps keep everything in place. I'm going to now carry on adding some more beads and then I'm going to come back to you to show you how to finish the design. So now I have continued to to add beads and I've incremented the sizes up so I've got a much smaller version of the necklace here but you can see um, how that can how you can sort of go from the smaller to the larger and decrease as well so when we've got to the other end and I've got all the beads in place I then want to repeat what I did at the beginning by plaiting a few um, of the strands just a little bit further up so again about a centimeter and a half so it's just that simple um, right into the middle and left into the middle action to finish the design. Okay, so always do just slightly more because in the next, in the process of putting the crimp on, you, you may lose a little bit of that plait. So go slightly more than you have at the other end. Bring all the strands together and then we're going to add a crimp tube to the ends of these in the same way as we did at the beginning. So we're just going to take all of those threads through that crimp tube, just taking your time to make sure you do get all of them in. Okay, and then we're just gonna slide that crimp tube down to the plait section here. So you can see how we lost some of that plait. So now if I push that down, I can put that back into place. Okay, 
And then once you're happy with that, you can then take the strands through the other end of your chosen clasp, so whichever end corresponds. And we're going to go through all the, all the strands through. And once again, we're going to just take two or three of these back through. So let's start with one at a time. So I'm just going to take one strand back through for a moment. And then let's try another. And depending on the size of your crimp tube, you may be able to get more back through. It's really um, just depends, but just get as many through as you can so that you can get a nice secure finish. Okay, so once you're once you're through, you then want to tighten tighten that up. So I'm just going to pull that down as far as I can until I'm happy that that is nice and secure. And then from here, we want to crimp this the same as we did on the other side. So I'm going to take my crimp pliers, close it over the crimp tube and give that a good squeeze. Good squeeze down to close that crimp tube up. OK, and then if you need to go back in from the other side and continue to fold the crimp tube over. OK, then we can trim off all our excess threads. So we trim off those ones and then come to this side with the clasp and trim, trim them as close as you can so that they you don't have any sharp edges. Okay, and then if we release that, then you can see then this will sit because of the nature of the plait. It just sits in a lovely fluid shape that sits nice and like almost like a collar around the neckline. And you can use that to do your clasp up. And that's how you do this necklace.